Kathy Big Deeply Awake. Well, I want to do show and tell. First off, on completion day, I bought myself a gifty. For uh, Christmas, I usually give myself one special thing, but I'm such a um, indulgent soul that, you know, if I, if I know I have to have something then I, and I can afford it, then I buy it. So Christmas doesn't mean a whole lot, but it is nice to mark the season. So I buy a ticket to the Cryon uh, Festival in January. Can't hardly wait. I get to spend a whole day with Prajit and listen to um, his Stargate, which whispers. I can't hardly wait. Ha ha ha! So that's one gift I give myself every year, and the other is I like to give myself something. So I gave myself this. It's a medallion. It's the Flower of Life um, symbol, I guess, but doesn't I don't like the Flower of Life when it's got the circle, you know? I like to have it free! And that's what this is. It's free! And it's got beautiful patterning. I just want, I want to get it up higher, a necklace that's higher like that. So I have, I'm, I'm like, a, looks like I'm a Power Ranger or an Iron Woman or something. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, I, I just did a, a video and I was about to put it out, but then I decided, you know, you know, it was dirtied up. There was energy in it that I just don't want to be associated with anymore. <gasps> Imagine such a thing. What's going on around here? So I'd like to talk about it. Last night, I gave myself a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful healing. Did I give myself, I opened the door. That's what I did. That's what I think the ceremony is all about. And uh, ritual. And certain uh, behaviors that we do that are, that can build the energy. Certainly. That's why I like ritual, because it builds energy. It just allows us to be more mindful. But this was a full-on event. And it was tantric. So, and it could have easily have happened in a meditation chair or on a nature walk. That it happened, um, you know, using sexual energy. Well, so much the better. <laughs> but here's the deal. It was all about releasing the old. It's just, <laughs> oh my God, what I released. <gasps> I had no idea. I had no idea. Pew. And as it's happening, I'm 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 joyously saying out loud, "It's done. It's over. It's gone. I. It's done. It's over. It's over. It's done. It's gone. It's complete." And it's the it's gone thing that I want to talk about. I realized I've been talking to Melissa, my sweet, sweet Melissa, just back and forth. A little bit, not much, but wow, key words. Whew. And something she said, she she came back with a with a comment that was just it's stunning. That about the energy that you know it's just shocking how much energy is used in waiting for the other shoe to drop, and how. Uh, Fatiguing, that is. And I wrote back, you know, she mentioned clenched, the word clenched. And I noticed this action. <laughs> you know, walking around like that. Literally. I mean, and I, I wrote to her, I, I notice sometimes my, my body is clenched and I am um, like I'm readying for a blow. And what I'm realizing is that... Um, the one, the only one, delivering blows anymore is me. And she wrote back and said, yeah, I could literally feel that in your body before. And she's, she's just very intuitive. It's not like, I mean, we hug, but we don't cuddle. But yeah, it's pretty evident. So this morning, I'm, I'm before I'm before I get onto my commute. I realize, you know, I did a lot of work around rituals. I mean, around um, not rituals, around um, what's that word? 
when you have to give up something to get something um, in religious orders vows and I know that I mean I, I know so many lifetimes as priests and nuns and acolytes and followers and and yeah so I and I knew that that was energy that I needed to lovingly and respectfully discharge I you know I acknowledged I took on the vows of chastity and poverty and silence I acknowledge that but until this morning I hadn't really fully wanted to admit that I had taken on that energy of self-flagellation so today I thought okay well you know that's off the table we're not doing that no more and all day long it was like that it was there was an absence of it and sure I was given invitations to enjoy but I uh, politely declined each and every time that particular delicacy was offered to me by another to feel bad about myself or little or small or whatever wrong <laughs> I have that happen about oh I don't know once every 15 minutes during my day <sighs> at work <laughs> oh another invitation to see I've done something wrong oh <laughs> yeah well uh, I politely uh, disagree with you on that one <laughs> Yikes. So, um, anyhow, self-flagellation. And so, on the way home, from a very lovely day, so soft, so beautiful, unbelievably nice, I realized I really did spend the day uh, not avoiding certain thoughts, but just not experiencing certain whole arenas of thought and um, finding an aversion to some of the thinking but for the most part I did notice a couple times oh I feel lonely oh I feel lonesome I feel this need to hold someone or to reach out or to be held or to I notice that and I'll figure out a way to manage that I'm not sure but um, just becoming more aware of opportunities to see love and to give kindness to myself. That's where it begins. That's where it ends. It's meaningless if I'm empty and um, I'm filling someone else up. It doesn't make any sense. What person would be okay and satisfied eating such a meal? What kind of agreement field is there that would require or reward that kind of behavior of um, feeding someone else what you're supposed to be eating yourself. So, what I'm thinking is that um, completion also means uh, the beginning of a new way of interacting and behaving, expecting and knowing. I'm going to celebrate the one 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 by getting a buzz cut. Yes, I am. Um, the hair that's been growing in is wiry and weird and um, I really feel like uh, I need to start over. I'm gonna start fresh. I'm gonna start with a buzz cut and I'm gonna grow my antenna out from that day forward. So that's going to be what I'm going to do. That's going to be my way of making it real. I might even dye my hair on top of it. I don't know, maybe black. 
Who knows? I don't care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's going to be fun. It's going to feel good. Because, um, you know, the stories that I tell, they're optional. They're all optional. And they, they also paint emotional pictures, just as other people's words do. If you hang, hung out with some people and noticed that in a half an hour's time, when you give them time, just free range, freestyle, all they talk to you about is what they hate or what they're afraid of or what they're pissed about. That's just their flavor. Introduce a different flavor and they get mad. They don't want to talk about what makes them happy or what makes them feel whole or what makes them feel elevated. They just want to talk about what pisses them off or angers them or scares them or fills them with grief. I get it. You think I haven't been there? Yeah, I've been there. But here's the question. And I pose it to you, perhaps in closing. I think the question has been, uh, for me, as a compassionate soul, as a nurse, as a healer, something like this. How is it helpful for me to walk around with a smile on my face, feeling good, when people around me are suffering? And believe me, people who are suffering are at times not too thrilled about seeing someone who is in balance. And this is what's changed. Just, I get it. I get it. I get feeling like crap about life, about yourself, about your future, about your past, about your present activities. I get it. I get it. And to be quite honest with you, I've spent far more than four years getting past it. I spent a lifetime getting past it. But my physical body got into the deal in October of 2011, and then I started hearing guidance within me in the form of messages that were whole, in the form of mess in uh, re recipes that actually made bread <laughs> and shouldn't have, in many different forms. And because it seems so unbelievable. And so not right. Nobody else around here is having this happen. Everybody else around here is hurting. I think I'll just keep hurting. But this is happening. I better write this down. But I gotta keep hurting. Yeah, no more, guys. So you can keep your suffering and your sadness and your angers and your griefs, grieving hold them close to you. Most people, if I tried to pull those things away from them, they get pissed at me, start hitting me. <laughs> Who are you to keep, take away my suffering? So, no problem, no worries from here on out. This has been a big, big time to learn my place. And I've been asked, and I've been told, if I, th who am I to think that I can walk into a system that is 30 years old, that is toxic, fucking toxic? Who the hell am I to walk into a system like that and think I can change it? What arrogance. That I have a better way? Yeah, obviously, but <sighs> how presumptuous. The most I can do is manage myself 
and find little joys and keep myself occupied in company. That's it. That was a big revelation. Because further, I realized I know what I'm talking about here. There, some of these things seem immovable. And for me, oftentimes they were. Anxiety or anger or uh, fear or whatever. Great motifs that would play out and people were more than willing to play along with me. But yeah, I mean, self-fulfilling prophecies too of um, basically of sad sack stuff. And the last thing I would want is for someone to come in and say, Hi, I have all the answers you're missing. Well, fuck you. Who do you know? Who, who are you to know about my pain? No. The only thing that ever worked for me is when somebody didn't notice my pain because they truly, honestly didn't care about it. They cared about me. So, I've been schooled. Yeah, walk around, you know, with light and all this stuff. <laughs> and then you realize, yeah, just, uh, is, just be happy. Don't worry, be happy. And um, you're not here to freaking heal anybody. Take anybody's pain away from them. No. No. That's, my pain was my was m mine. And honey, it came from my Akash. It came from lifetimes. And it, it was flavored by this lifetime. And it wasn't ready until it was ready. The only thing that ever helped me was being loved. What, what made me walk straight for the rest of this time was being witnessed and not being criticized. <sighs> being appreciated. Actively appreciated. That's it. And I say that's it. That's everything. There's, there's, there's nothing else. Simply being appreciated the me inside of all of that pain. Sometimes the 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 pain accoutrement is just too much. And that's what I was shaking off last night. And guess what? As my body just laughed and laughed and laughed and my innate got into it and I I didn't even have thoughts I, I wasn't thinking comedy I wasn't making myself laugh I, w I was actually wondering how it was that I could have so much joy and, and why was my why am I laughing that's what I kept at why am I laughing and then I realized I didn't care why I was laughing. It just felt good. It was the only appropriate response. And it went on and on and on. And then it went on some more. <laughs> and today I kind of feel the same way. I really don't want to resonate. I don't even want to consider this stuff. So I, I want to close by saying human constructs, sure. Yeah, there's lots of human constructs all around. What What's helping me just whew, immediately to feel centered and happy is to remember my God. My God. You've got yours. I have mine. <laughs> it's the same thing, but whatever. I can speak for myself. And I can find my God in a clover patch, in the bathtub, in the sky, in the dark. 
my God. My God wants me to know that I'm innocent. My God wants for me to know I belong here. I have, not only do I have a place, but um, I'm a I'm a valued member of this whole thing. Not I don't mean I'm a leader. I mean I'm a valued member that I belong. My God wants me to remember I'm never alone. And my God loves me no matter what I'm thinking, no matter what words I'm going around in my mind, no matter what's coming out of my mouth, my God wants me to know it's okay. I'm okay. I'm loved. I'm loved. And I know, I know, God is in you. God is you. God is the people who challenge me <coughs> daily. God is those who aren't shy about their love for me. And God are those who can't quite figure out how they feel about me. So, when I think about my God, and I bring it really personal, and I think about clover, or a tree, or my breath, None of the other stuff matters. <laughs> they're constructs. They're they're like they're just constructs. None of that matters. Only love is real. Only love is real. And for me, God is love. For me. For me. for me. Only God is real. That's the real stuff. The other stuff, it's just us having fever dreams. <laughs> so, that's been the whew, separating. And so now, it, here's the choice that I have. I can see that you're unhappy. I can see that you're in pain. I see that you're suffering. And no, I do not feel those feelings today. I'm sorry that you do. And we go on from there. I gotta eat to choir. I hope this finds you well and happy. I think this is a, a, a good representation of what's occurring. It is a not a cleaving, it's not a, it's really a, a brand new. Doesn't, uh, doesn't completion imply new beginnings? Yeah, the new fractals in the old. I'm very, very pleased. The news here.